Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I would ask you please take a uh, look at some of the announcements in the bulletin. Um, I like the fact that Nikki puts in now the upcoming events that go until October, just in case you were uh, unaware of things that go on that far in advance. I can't remember what's supposed to go on next week. Um, but uh, <clears throat> The, uh, the next weekend here in the, in the Fellowship Hall will be our Gather and Craft event. Uh, you are welcome to bring a craft that you like to do, or perhaps one you'd like to learn to do. Um, Pete, could you bring in one of your milling machines? Maybe we could do some, we could do some metal work here for the guys. Um, most of us don't like crochet or, or sew, um, or things like that, but maybe we could do that, Pete. What do you think? Okay. Um, Kenny, have we, have we waxed the floor yet in the fellowship hall? Not yet this year? Oh, we're good then, Pete. We should be good. <clears throat> Anyways, that's next weekend. Uh, craft work on butt. She said uh, there is a bonus because they're going to be making 4th of July um, craft. I don't know what it is. Uh, for shut-ins, for our shut-ins. So if you come, you can do some of your own stuff, but I think they're going to ask you to, hey, would you help make one of these things? I have no idea what it is. So, um, but that's next Saturday. Um, I leave that kind of stuff to my wife. Like, like I leave the garden to my wife, which means I haven't seen her for two weeks. Um, if you drive by my house at nine o'clock at night and there's a spotlight out back of the house toward the, like the, toward the, between the, the parking lot and my house, um, I'm not making my wife be out there. People think, really, you, you, you mean you put a light out there so your wife, your slave driver? I'm like, I don't make her do that. It makes her happy. And it, that means if she's happy, what does it mean, guys? So um, anyways, but that's next weekend. Please join us for that. And sh she will be in a good mood because <clears throat> following our service today, uh, we are leaving for Minnesota to see grandbaby. Um, who's scooting across the floor pretty quick now? He's not learned, hasn't learned to use his knees, but he does the he does the soldiers crawl pretty fast across his floor. So um, we'll be heading up to see him. So she'll be in a great mood when we come back. Um, I I assume. <clears throat> Thank you, Angel of Doom. Uh, <clears throat> There was, uh, you remember there was a bin under the bulletin board for um, supplies for the mill up at the, up at the high school. Um, now, there's, now there's one there for back to school supplies. So um, if you're, as you're out uh, shopping or something, you can see there's a whole mess of, of things there that, that they're looking for. Um, maybe grab one thing and bring it home with you and throw it in the bin. They'll be doing that through August 13th. August 13th actually, um, <clears throat> Is that a Sunday this year? I forget. What's that? We'll be at Corth Park that weekend. Uh, I think it'll be that weekend, but it might be that Monday afterwards. But we can, we'll make, we'll see if we can get the bin out to Corth Park for those folks who want to bring stuff out there. <coughs> that is Sunday? <coughs> okay. We'll be out of Corth Park that Sunday. Um, so, uh, are there any other announcements this morning? What? 
Oh, it's got moved from last week. I'm sorry. Uh, CEC will be Wednesday night at 6.30 down the Matthew Room <clears throat> as they got bumped from last week to this week. The trustees got bumped from last week to this week, too, and it just so happens the elders aren't meeting, so it works out fairly well. <clears throat> but they'll be down in the Matthew Room as well. Also on Thursday, we will have a service here honoring the life of Marvin, Marvin Barreidel. Um, that'll be Thursday. Um, so <clears throat> please, uh, please uh, make note of that. Busy week again. <clears throat> I'm sorry. My, uh, my personal thanks. <laughs> I know I said it last week, but um, the kitchen crew has had quite a spring since about February, uh, sometime in February, early February, uh, with the, a number of funerals that we've had here at the church. Um, my thanks to all of them and all the work they have done um, in the kitchen <clears throat> and getting everything ready for the services, uh, everything ready for the meals, uh, having to scramble sometimes to do things back and forth. But um, my, my personal um, thanks to all of those who have helped out in the kitchen. Um, they, don't get us, they don't get the recognition that I get from standing up and doing a service. Um, you know, the guy back, the, the two yahoos back there doing dishes, Warren and Bob, um, <clears throat> and um, so, but I do thank all of them for their work. Um, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to have. Um, so thank you for all that. <clears throat> also yesterday, I, yesterday was my 33rd wedding, and our 33rd ordination anniversary. Um, Yeah, that, that just means apparently that I can do a lot more damage than I could when I first started. But, um, <clears throat> and this week, um, this week will be my wife's uh, 29th birthday on Wednesday. Bruce, Bruce made the, I, Bruce asked me about that. And he said, boy, was she, was she pretty young when you got married? And I said, well, how do you think she said yes? <laughs> um, because <clears throat> the day after the 15th is our 38th wedding anniversary. So, um, huh? I usually say 29.95 plus shipping and handling. So. <clears throat> And I will tell you, she's not here, so I can say this this morning. Um, my wife looks as beautiful as the day I married her. Um, I still look at her and think of her as being that 24-year-old 20, uh, back in the day. Um, the only trouble is, I look at these two behemoths, I mean, excuse me, two sons who live with us, and realize that my wife can't be quite that, uh, that young anymore. But um, <clears throat> it is a... Uh, it has been a wonderful life, and I always make the joke that it's her anniversary she's celebrating, and everyone kind of thinks maybe I should be celebrating. Uh, and so, but if you, we will be back uh, for the funeral on Thursday, obviously, so if you do get a chance to see her, you can wish her a, a happy anniversary. <clears throat> Would you please stand and join me in our call to worship? Come gather in the presence of Christ, who is our friend and healer, entered here to worship, yearning for hope and comfort. Let us reach to the heart of Jesus, who is our life. Here we, wel we are welcome and loved and cherished. Let's rejoice and give God praise. <clears throat>
come to a time of prayer, um, community prayers. Um, I'll pray for that first, and then I will start the, you'll see the response of prayer there. It'll start with God of light and love. So <clears throat> in our prayer concerns this morning, please keep uh, the families of, of Marie Westcott and Don Hine, um, whose services we held this past week here, Thursday and Friday. <clears throat> um, also, uh, and although Marie hadn't been a member here for 71 years, I believe it was, close to, um, she had grew up in this congregation. Lois Zimmerman, her sister, is still a member of our congregation. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I didn't realize this until I made mention of it, that um, uh, Marie, actually, her, she and her husband eloped back in what year it would have been. Um, and I made mention that they went to Davenport, Iowa to elope. And I was like, wow, I didn't realize that Davenport was now the romance capital of the Midwest. Um, but uh, <clears throat> anyways, uh, but that was uh, kind of funny. But obviously their life, I, I guess it worked out for them, huh? Um, pretty well. So, uh, but please keep those families in your prayers. Also, the family of, of Marvin uh, Baridal, whose service will be this week. So please keep them in your prayers as well. <clears throat> Are there any other prayer concerns or joys this morning? Connie. Uh, first, Washington, D.C. for the eighth graders. Oh, why don't they leave? They take leave today at 11.30. The eighth graders be headed to Washington, D.C. They're apparently trying to get as far away from government as possible. <clears throat> I know that other classes have went there uh, from other schools I've been at, and they, it's really an eye-opening experience for the kids because you see those things on, on TV, pictures, but it's a whole lot different when you actually see it in real life. So um, any other concerns or joys this morning? Mike? Got out those four kids found in the Amazon after 40 days. Yeah, that's how long it was 40 days? 40 days. Maybe I should ask some of the young people here. Jeannie, you think you could survive in the jungle for 40 days? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Rachel? No. No? Okay. Derek? No. Okay. <laughs> And he's a little older, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, amazing. So um, I'm sure they didn't think they'd find him, but that prayers for them. There's prayers of joy as our our niece Melissa got married in Madison yesterday. Your niece Melissa got married yesterday in Madison. <clears throat> Anything else this morning? Oh, sorry, Dave. Oh. Uh, Barb went, uh, is currently hospitalized uh, with fluid buildup uh, down at Fort. She'll probably come home tomorrow, you're thinking. Um, so she went in Friday morning. And Dave said at 4 o'clock when they called him, 4 a.m., uh, when they called him to tell him that. Um, so please keep Barb in your prayers. And she'll be heading back to uh, Lilac, not Lilac Springs, Brook Gardens um, following that. Is there anything else this morning? Would you please join me then in a word of prayer? <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for the saints that have come before us. We remember especially the saints whom we've lost over the past few months. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ created in the image of their God redeemed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We are thankful that at the right time, you chose to call them home and that they are free of the pain of this life. We ask that you give their families strength and patience and peace during this time, that as they move forward with a bit of emptiness, they will be comforted by the fact of knowing where their loved ones are. Lord, we ask your blessings upon the young people as they head to uh, Washington today on their long journey. Uh, may you uh, 
give them, uh, make, make them open to the joys of education that they can see, the wonders that they will find. Uh, we ask, Lord, your blessings upon all of our friends and family that we know to be either in need of your prayer, of your, your touch, or simply uh, in need of your smile for the thanksgiving of what they have done. Lord, bless us this day as we come together. God of light and love, we come with gratitude to this time of prayer. For family and friends and friends who are family, we offer you our thanks and praise. Especially do we thank you for those who show us your way, doing so through the light of their love. We offer our gratitude for our church family both those present here for worship and those who were unable. For those of our church family who worship from home, we ask for the comfort of your presence. In these moments of quietude, give us courage to lose ourselves that we might truly find ourselves. Lead us in the way of truth. We honestly see the gifts we have and grant us the strength to share our gifts with others. Might the light of your love so shine in our lives. The lives of others might be illuminated by us. And may this brilliance be a beacon of hope, as evidenced by the life of your Son, our Lord, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat>
Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, <clears throat> chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. But there will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephal. But in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. And the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalt when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their hearts and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And his authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. <clears throat> and the gospel reading is from the gospel according to Matthew. It's the ninth chapter verses 9 to 13 and 18 to 26. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and he followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. And reading on in, chapter, in verse 18, <clears throat> While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. And Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. And when the crowd had been, been put outside, he went in, and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout the district. May God add his blessing to our hearing and understanding of his holy world. May we bring to God our morning tithes and offerings. <clears throat>
we thank you for your life-giving water which flows upon our earth today. We thank you for those who have been in the field working to bring us food. We thank you for those who plant gardens for their own enjoyment as well as for life-giving food. Lord, you give us all of life from the time we are born until the time we return to you. The breath that we have, the spirit that is within us, comes from you. Bless, Lord, these gifts we bring to you now. Multiply them with your love and send them out into our world to be our hearts, our hands, our feet, working in it. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> My wife gave me that slip about uh, the craft thing, and I realized it needs to be in the bulletin board before I probably get back there, so... Um, that's what Kenny's doing now. So if he's not just running away. So <clears throat> have any of you ever experienced real darkness? I mean really dark darkness. In uh, back in nineteen ninety five, uh, Dina and I were on a mission trip in Jamaica. And um, unlike around here where you have yard lights, uh, farms have usually all have y yard lights and those things. There's nothing there. We're up in the mountains at the Bethany Church, um, which was founded three years before the slaves were allowed to worship God. This church was. And uh, they actually had, um, uh, used to at one point, their, their organ was in the balcony, and it was an air-driven organ, and they used to have three people on Sunday morning who would stand outside and make the bellows go up and down to, to make the organ blow air into the organ back in those days. A couple hurricanes took the roof off, but it never took the roof off where that organ was at, up in the balcony. So we're up there, and, and afterwards we had a little something to eat there, and we uh, mess around. We come back, and it's night. I have never witnessed such pitch blackness as I did that night. Because you just see nothing. There's no lights, there's no um, you know, towns with light pollution as they call it nowadays. There's nothing. And of course, we're driving along this, this road, and uh, um, imagine my surprise when, as we come around this corner, there's a gentleman standing there having a cigarette in the pitch blackness, and I'm like, how did they avoid hitting him? Um, but, and he's just standing there like, yeah, how you doing? But utter darkness. Now, um, I have a scar in my eyebrow um, from um, when I was at my second year at Winmore. This was at Pine Lake up at uh, Westfield, where Jane, you must remember that a little bit. Um, some other ones probably do as well. That's where we had our junior high camp, Winmore. And um, that's back in the day when we had a cabin that was up here. It was about a three-season cabin, and you had a central place where you went to shower and use the bathroom. Um, so it's, it's toward the evening. It's like we're getting ready for cabin, getting ready to, you know, to be in the cabins. And um, I believe Harley and Ginny Fry were both there, <clears throat> as were at least one of their sons. And um, I had walked out of the cabin, and someone said, let's get him. So I took off running down toward the, the shower facility there. Um, I was a lot thinner back then. Um, seventh grade, I was probably at most 95 pounds. Um, <clears throat> kind of a lanky kid. So I took off running. I can move much faster then than I do today. And uh, I'm running down there. And then I turn to see where they're, if they're coming after me. I never said I was the sharpest knife in the drawer. And behold, a tree jumped out in front of me. And I whacked it with my head. 
and the two boys come running up and they're laughing until I look up, up at them. And they see the blood coming down my face and they're like, oh! And of course, what we really need at camp is a bunch of seventh grade paramedics, uh, you know, helping out with stuff. But finally, they end up taking me to, the, to some place um, and I get stitched up. And just to let you know, I had the same scar as Jason Momoa, which is the only thing we have in common, I believe. But uh, running in the dark, not the, not the sharpest thing to do or the greatest thing to do, right? Even if you're out hunting, um, it, before, you know, before it's light or after it's, or after it's turned dark, Steve, you've been out in the woods when it's been dark, but yet you can still see a little bit. But we do know the difference between light and dark. The Bible is filled with examples of light and darkness. Even we go back to Genesis, right? What's one of the first things God created? The heavens and the earth? Light. Light and darkness. We come to this piece from Isaiah. Um, have you heard this piece before? Anybody recognize that piece? It's kind of out of place today, is it not? Because when do we normally do that piece? Christmas Eve. That's one of the ones that I always read on Christmas Eve. Isaiah proclaiming the coming of a Messiah that I should say that we as Christians proclaim. Some of his other pieces just prior to that. Now you have to understand in chapter 8 there, um, Isaiah has really kind of hammered the people with, hey, you haven't obeyed God. This is what's going to be happening to you. There's going to be some bad things happening. You're going to be punished for what you have not done. He mentions at one point about, um, about somebody who will bring righteousness, and it, it's kind of interesting. I think he's, he's perhaps referring to Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, who followed his, king, his father, King Ahab, who was one of the worst kings of all time. And his son comes, and you think normally he would just keep carrying on, right? Instead, he realizes that we need to go back to being the people of God. His father had put idols in the temple, asked people to worship different things rather than their God. Hezekiah threw all that out. So we're getting from Isaiah a little bit of, I think, of this Hezekiah, somebody who's bringing back order to the people. But, he does say, unto us a son is born, unto us a child is given. We equate that with Christ. In the day, it might have been equated with a coming king. But now there's one thing about that. Do you know what kind of king you're going to get? When, when, a, when, a, when a king has a child who's going to be a future king, when that child is a baby, do you have any idea what that child is going to grow up into? Or what kind of ruler that person will be? There's no way to know. All of us who've had children, right? When they're younger, you think, oh, they're going to be this. Oh, they're going to be that. My grandmother thought that I was going to be a TV repairman. Because I was always messing with the TV, you know, trying to tune it in a little better, always doing something. And nowadays, what do we do with used TVs? We throw them away, right? They don't get repaired anymore, we just pitch them. So good thing I didn't go into that. That'd be like, I suppose that'd be the same as being a VCR repairman, right? Um, so... But we don't know what's, what that person's going to be. We equate it with Christ. Do you think the people back then had any idea what the Messiah was going to be like? Their vision was of a Davidic king, a warrior king who was going to come in and destroy all their enemies and make their country great again. 
Now keep in mind as Isaiah is saying this, um, the country's being invaded by Assyria. Actually the land of Naphtali, the land of Zebulun, they have already been taken over by Assyria. When Isaiah talks about uh, the way to the sea, that is actually a route, a trade route, a major trade route from Damascus to the Mediterranean. The Assyrians had already taken over that as well. So Isaiah is saying all these words in the midst of bad things happening. And finally, we get to darkness. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Now Christmas Eve, of course, we raise that light up, right? That's why we like to have our services at night. Because we, because we enjoy that light coming into the darkness. That's what makes the service so pretty. Is it not? That light, um, uh, that little candle lighting up the place. That little candle, which most of you don't get the chance to see because you're sitting out there, but standing up front, I get to see all those faces that illuminated. Sometimes there's those little ones going. Their parents tell them, don't stare at the flame. Or once in a while you hear, ow! Wax got on somebody or, or somebody's hair started uh, singeing a bit. But light is going to come into darkness because it will pierce the darkness and give us a pathway, a safe pathway to travel on. This is what Isaiah is prophesying. Long before Christ ever came around. It's what the people were looking for, a Messiah who's going to lead them out. That's not what they got. <laughs> right? They got a carpenter from Nazareth who didn't come in to overthrow the government, who didn't yeah, build up a big army to defeat the Romans. For crying out loud, they got a guy who fixed somebody's ear who came to arrest him. They got a guy who from the cross that he's being crucified on said, Father, forgive them. That doesn't sound much like a king. Not the one they were expecting. Now darkness, there is physical darkness, and there's also spiritual, psychological darkness. The deep, dark hole of despair that comes on once in a while. Over the past few weeks, months, I guess it's been, we've really suffered some darkness. Since um, about February 11th, uh, I would have to count again, but it's either 13 or 14 deaths in the congregation. Now, in that same amount of time, uh, we've had a couple baptisms, we've had uh, some confirmations, we've had a wedding, so there is some light, or at least, hopefully. But I can tell you that in the past few weeks especially, it's gotten really dark for me. Things have been happening in my life that have just been devastating. Two of those things occurred this week, on top of all the deaths and everything else that's going on. And then on Wednesday morning, I looked at the scripture for this morning. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Really God, this is what you want me to talk about? I've had a horrible week, and you want me to bring people hope. Oh, good Lord. I say that with a, with a joy, by the way. You can laugh at that. 
I mean, it's, 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 it's interesting how God sometimes just kicks you in the, in the head without you realizing. It's something I realized this week. Tuesday was the, the bad day when everything seemed to be falling apart. But I noticed on Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, Friday morning, the sun came up. Did any of you see that? The sun came up those days. It came up yesterday. I think it's come up today a little bit at least. We may not see the actual sun today, but it did come up. Life did not stop. Hope is still there. God still blesses us. Sometimes it is really hard to see it. This week for me personally has been one of them. And as I stand before you, I wonder how I will go forward, how we will go forward. And the answer is, I don't know. But God does. And God continues to bless us as a people, as a congregation. God continues to empower us. God continues to love us. It may seem very dark at times. And it does get that way. Let's face it, it does. But that's the times when we need to put our trust in our God. That's not easy to do. Because are we not the ones who take care of things? Are we not the ones who fix things? Are not we the ones who control our own destiny? No. We like to think so, but we're not. <clears throat> we will overcome. We will continue to be loved by our God. We will continue to be blessed by our God. We will persevere. Now I say that to you knowing that... Um, there's sometimes I've wondered whether I should persevere or not. Whether I should, <clears throat> you know, start driving truck instead of doing this. When I should maybe be a, um, a full-time firefighter instead. Which, by the way, just to let you know, I couldn't. I'm too old. <laughs> And I'm feeling that today because we had a fire at 1 o'clock this morning. We tried to wake Dewey up, but apparently we didn't do a good enough job. He didn't hear us go by. Yes. Oh, you did hear us, okay. Um, it wasn't a bad fire, luckily. Could have been a lot worse. But uh, there again, getting shaken out of bed at 1 o'clock, really. Yeah. Somehow, for some reason, God called me to persevere. God called me to do this. There are times, yes, when I question that. There are times, some, some days, several times a day I question that. And yet somehow, we persevere. Somehow God still gives glimpses of the heaven. Sometimes God still gives glimpses of his great love. We, we are the people who have walked in darkness. We are the people who have seen a great light. A Savior has been given to us. That is the hope we share. Would you please join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for the many hardships as well as joys in life. 
For if life was all joy, 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 how would we know how to deal with the darkness? Lord, your light does shine upon us. We ask that you help us to be lights as well, shining in somebody else's deep darkness of despair. Lord, continue to guide us. Continue to empower us. Continue. Continue, Lord, to show us the way. Amen. Would you please stand and join me in our closing hymn? Amen. This place know that you carry with you the light of our God the light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the light of the Holy Spirit go into the darkness and help those who have lost their way to find the way to their God go now to love and to serve our Lord amen <laughs>